full up and full at January 16th. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to call this uh, workshop uh, meeting to order on January the 9th. We didn't have a meeting on the 2nd, and then our next uh, formal, formal meeting will be on January 16th. But we got a few things on the agenda. One is the, uh, I see we have the July 4th, 2019 fireworks. Uh, we have a proposal here in front of us, and uh, is there any questions or comments? I think last year uh, I wasn't at the fireworks display. I think there was a couple comments about the time, how long it was for the display, or was everyone satisfied? I don't really know uh, if there was any questions or comments or what were exactly. We did the comments um, that it was about 20 minutes long, yeah, the entire show. Okay. And that's what initiated the conversation today mm -hmm. to see if the board wants to go with the extended show and if the board does, uh, the prices are right there. Okay, so very good. So if you look through the packet, you'll see here on the on the second page, it talks about the uh, proposed, currently right now the proposal for fireworks is $16,500, and that is based on how many minutes, Michelle? The current uh, contract is $16,500. That's what was paid last year. Yep. Your proposed fine is $17,500 for... Seven, you, so we have two options on the table. Come on up here. Talk absolutely. with us. Introduce yourself and absolutely. talk to us at the board. Absolutely. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. So my name is uh, Brian Hombach. I'm the safety and permit director. I work as extravaganza. I handle anything comes in you know, the company. Um, I've been working with Michelle for a handful of years now. With Don Delphi. Yes. Planning. Um, we have two options on the table. We're pushing out some cost increase across the board to all of our clients this year, mm -hmm. um, which is typically about a 6% increase. 6.06% increase in cash finance. Um, but we want to try to take care of you guys. So our thought of this is, you know, a 22 to 25 minute show for a single year option being 17500 Now, there was talks of extending the time of the display. Now, we put another proposal on the table for 30 to 32 minutes for 19,000. Now that's a 15% increase. Mm -hmm. um, I sat and talked to the owner a little bit about it, and you know, we want to give you guys the best money. If you bought an air municipality, you don't want to hit cost increase every year. So an option we, we came up with was if you're to lock in at a two year agreement with us, we're willing to do the 6.06 .06 increase for two years at the 30 to 32 minute length. So we'll extend the duration of the show and keep it at the increase that would be for the current time right now. Very good. Okay. One of the comments came up last year because I, I was there at the event. And uh, the time that we paid for it <coughs> was shortened based on the time that the display started. But it may have been because of the storm. And that's the only reason why I'm bringing this up. Whether or not it was due to the storm, whatever, uh, it was a good show, but yeah. it did. The comment was it was, it was it was shortened based on what we thought we were paying for. I know the proposal for 2018 was for 20, no less than 25 minutes show. Um, I'm also a field technician as well. I shoot about 60 or 70 shows a year for the company. And I actually shot in the region last year on the same day. And I can tell you that storm and weather definitely did play a part in getting the shows off the ground. Um, the fuse can get wet and delayed, so sometimes you have to work more than one ordinance at the same time to ensure that you don't have to extend the dark skies. So I actually have the, the report here from the shooter. Um, I'm looking at 22 minutes per their report, and this is just handwritten. This isn't, you know, they don't have timing on site. I, I can pull video and see exactly what the duration is, but if it was 20 minutes, I can certainly justify the alteration of the duration based on what I I think what I heard was, I, I do believe, because I time it every year, because one year we did the music for it, and it was 28 minutes for music. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the finale I heard from people was not as much as it has been in the past. Now, again, like Commissioner Pryor just said, whether it was the weather that could have 
play a part in it, I'm not sure. But I did hear that from some people. Okay. Um, I actually have the inventory portion here from last year. And you guys normally have a very substantial finale. And I think it parallels with your past. Um, off the cuff, the best thing I could probably say is whether it did have something to do with, with the duration of the display as a whole. Um, definitely can take a special note to making sure that finale is as impactful as possible because, I mean, let's all be honest with each other, that's the most impactful part of the show. It's a big more member of I too would there and I echo pretty much what they had said, but personally myself, I thought the finale was good. But you know, when you get a situation, if you had a thousand people, you're gonna have a thousand answers. But you know, I just thought it was good and um, again I didn't really hear much about the problem with the finale, but they did, so you know, it's it's, it's, it's who gives what comment because it's all subjective. Yeah, absolutely. Well listen, uh, I wasn't there and I'm looking forward to being there this year uh, for the event. Now, I, I think one challenge that we may have, uh, of course, if it continues to rain and rain and rain and rain, our park uh, currently right now is, is, is just an absolute mess. Uh, I don't know how that will affect us come July, uh, but we may want to look at uh, uh, other options, too, within the town where we could maybe be uh, high and dry all the time. And I don't know if there is an option for us. But, uh, I love the product that you guys put out. You do a fantastic job for us. Um, myself, I'm willing to uh, commit to the two-year agreement, and uh, uh, I think that you guys have been a great partner with the town of Elton. Uh, I think overall, I think we have the finest fireworks, uh, certainly in the county. You guys do a great job for us, and I know you'll continue to do uh, even a better job for us, and I appreciate you coming in. How is, I mean, collectively, is we feel that way? Oh, absolutely. So we can't take a vote on it today, but I think, uh, is there any uh, staff, Lou, you have any questions, comments? Uh, I think the shows have been good. I mean, you know, great. Mary? <laughs> Mary? Okay. I just want to comment on the length. Like, that had a lot to do with the shooter. From my experience, we've had one show that lasted like 40 minutes, but it wasn't boom, 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 boom. It was a uh, firework and a little bit, just a little bit of a delay, and then another one. Um, this was it was much quicker, but again, we were trying to get them to get the show started um, because of the weather. So it, they may have felt, you know, so to rush it a little bit, but you know, you just put a couple of seconds in between each one, and you're gonna. The show's going to last a little bit longer. There was not very much of a delay between any of them. I mean, it was just one right after the other. And when you get to the finale, yeah. you've been going shot, 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 so the finale isn't as no. exciting because they were so close together the entire show. Yeah. Sort of it seems like it kind of parallels yeah. with the body of the display. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. I think we, I think we were having discussions out on the field. And we kind of asked your folks to step it up. We're, you know, I'm, completely oblivious to the fact that there's a contract. We're talking about how much time and all that stuff. We have thunder and lightning headed our way, so I think Mary and I were kind of saying, let's, let's get it going and let's get them up and get it done. And I, I think no matter how much uh, time, time uh, like you want, if you have a storm coming, uh, your staff on the ground are probably going to be asking these folks uh, Let's go. Let's, let's, let's get it lit up. Right. That's right. Anything else? No, I, I, I agree with you. I like the, the, the two years, but also we don't know what other option we're going to have down the road because I rode to the park today and it's still muddy and I just don't know how that's going to, how it's going to be microfitted in order for this to happen in case rain comes or what the condition of the park would be, but I still like what, what's been offered thus far. I definitely would like to extend myself if you guys want to do a site visit other places in town you know uh, typically our contracts are built into a specific location but mm -hmm. there's no reason why I can't put type, some type of amendment in there to say you know it's at site A if you know, the weather's not conducive or we need to change the site on year two we can definitely make that amendment contract make sure it's agreed. And if I may mm -hmm. just one other thing I know that last year we changed and did many more aerials than uh -huh. ground one is the finale affected by fewer ground 
works? Actually, ground effects, or I, I guess what you call ground effects, are commonly in the industry referred to as like K clouds, uh, which, as opposed to being individual pieces of ordnance, they are actually a, a box effect that has maybe 100 shots in it of a small caliber. Normally, those are built into the body of this clay. Um, sometimes you might have salute cakes, which are non visual, all audio, um, in the finale, but that wouldn't affect them. Very good. Well, listen, Brian, thank you so much for showing up and uh, talking to us. I think it's very appreciative on our part, and uh, we're going to look forward to making a vote for you next Wednesday. All right, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. <coughs> All right, next we have uh, on the agenda uh, fiscal year 2020 department requests. And uh, uh, at, at our last uh, meeting or our last workshop, we what, what I wanted to accomplish is I'm, I'm glad that everyone might be uh, prepared with capital uh, requests or department requests, but uh, also I wanted to know uh, what the department heads, uh, how they feel about space. Uh, space uh, in, in uh, as far as uh, 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 do you have enough space? What do you think your space requirement's going to be over the next X amount of years? Uh, should we be looking down the road 10 years for more space for you? Uh, and, and the reason why that uh, is coming out is we have an opportunity, of course, to acquire the Elton Armory, and we've got uh, some folks soliciting for that uh, property uh, for uh, other uses, and uh, I'd just like to know if we're... Uh, I want to know what our needs are before uh, we worry about too many other needs. Uh, we've got to take care of uh, what we have in here first, too. Uh, so, Ms. Jean Minner, you want to be first? Yeah, I definitely need storage space for, for all the uh, documents and maps and plans. And um, I know that Lewis has been utilizing uh, those C-tainers down by the wastewater treatment plant. It's not really... Um, convenient for us to try to get back and forth there to, to retrieve things. We've been using the upstairs of Mary's current office, and y'all really need to go upstairs there and take a look at it. <laughs> um, because that's, it's packed, and it shouldn't, it, it should probably be put in a better place. And my office, if you've been back to the office and see my office is jammed with file cabinets, um, it, I need space for storage for uh, documents, and it has to be a, a climate controlled space. Otherwise, we lost a lot of documents when we sorted down at the public work garage. They got moist, they got moldy. Um, this was years ago, and, and we ended up losing a lot of documents. Yeah, it, and, and, and just uh, volume of space, if you had a room about this size, would it handle your needs for how long? I, I'd have to look at it. I'd have okay. to look at what we have and what we have upstairs. Um, and maybe even um, Chip's office too. If you want to. <clears throat> Chip, do you feel what's your needs? We need the same thing: storage for plans and documents, permits. Um, I'd say a room this size would probably do planning and building and zoning for 15 years anyway. Okay. But we definitely you know, running out of room. It's the same thing. To put it down the wastewater treatment plant is just we, we're we're pulling plans every week. From upstairs. If we put them down there, it's just going to take too much time to <coughs> go get them. Um, as far as space, when we get into this uh, rental property registration, if that comes about, you know, I may or may not need another person to enter data. Uh, and the problem is, we don't have any mm -hmm. place to put anybody right now. I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to handle it ourselves or not. I won't know until we get started. But that's something that, you know, definitely as the town grows and, you know, things keep happening, we need more space. We also need meeting room space. Um, the, the front office uh, across from Michelle's desk, I think was when we designed the building originally, that was supposed to be a conference room so that we didn't have to come in here to meet with people. And, and the map room that we also use is really for storage. It's not really conducive to having meetings with those. Um, and it looks like a storage room. 
mm -hmm. plans. Um, but the front office, um, I think finance has been, it was used for a variety of purposes up until now, but, um, and very briefly as a conference room. <laughs> Uh, but and the thing that finds it has uh, storage in there too. Uh, and, and, and IT, yeah. Dan, uh, what's your thinking? I've got problems, but I got solutions all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Currently, I have two. I have two buildings I use. I use the facility at um, 209 Blue Ball Avenue. I got about 7,500 square feet. I got a 4,000 square foot mechanic shop. Around there, I really can't expand, which is fine. I also got, I also jumped, got the skate park too. I'm using temporarily. It's about 5,000 square feet. Where, where was that at again? Skate park. Oh, skate park, right? It's too long. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I got, it's a 5,000 square foot facility. All I do there is I put enough heat in there. Uh, typically during the summer, I'll, I'll throw all the um, lawn equipment there because it comes in and out quicker. During the winter, I keep my vacuum truck down there. I keep my hydro excavator. Anything with water, I keep it, you know, so it doesn't freeze. That works that way. For my budget this time, I got a proposal is, if you ever go into the wastewater treatment plant, you've got the big, obviously a compost building. This particular structure is about 30,000 square feet. I'm in the process now of actually, I've had, I've had a structural design into it, and it's, you know, the the, the, the building itself is fine. You know, the, the bones are fine, it's just kind of re, I got to put a new roof on it and new walls. So in the process of doing that itself, and that'll give me about 30,000 square feet. And my intention is to move all my equipment and one central spot would be down there, at least that way everything's out of the weather and all that stuff would be one centralized location. And hopefully within 2020 we can make that happen. So I've got needs, well, because I've got plans, so I can, if I get this thing up, up and running, it should meet my needs. Well, that's great news. And, and uh, where the Red Cross building, uh, we currently enter it into a, a yearly lease with them. Mm -hmm. So I think from a public works perspective, you do have options. Uh, with the wastewater treatment plant, you got the parking yes. lot. So that's good. That's good news. Mm -hmm. Mary? I see like 18, 19,000 square feet on the day. Okay, so if you get this building, <laughs> you're going to be in pretty good shape. Now, uh, I'm glad we're talking about that because now is, is you're thinking that the building that you're in right now, you would be moving, out. you would definitely be out of that building that we have next door, and you'd be over there 100%. Mm -hmm. And how much space is that building over there? I don't know. I, I can see it in my A thousand square feet. A thousand? Okay. So, uh, all right. HR. Well, right now we're set up as basically one big multi-purpose space, and we really need more segregation. Um, so ideally, we should have a reception area that's separated from the conference room so someone can be working and you can have a meeting and it's, you know, not privacy is maintained. Um, our files room, it'd be great to have a separate file room that's locked, secured, so because not all the files locked, so it really needs to be separated. Um, and that's for storage area too. And then we currently need one additional office. We have one private office. We should have two private offices, the reception area, a file storage room, and a conference room. Would, uh, would HR be okay off-site? Could it be in that building next door? And you've never be, seen it. There, there would be conditions. Um, the windows going across the front would have to be gone. I mean, I don't. I, some sort of wall needs to be put in there. I, I wouldn't want to sit in there with all the glass. Um, the chief and I have actually talked about maybe putting in some security measures where there's a uh, a little foyer that they can act, people can come in from the street. But then they're stopped until they're either buzzed in or give the employees a, a key file to come in themselves. But anybody else, they can't come just full access. Because right now, I've talked to Mary and Cheney, and there's issues with people just wandering in from the street. And when we had a lot of homeless around town, they just wander in there and stand there looking around. Well, if they're sitting there by themselves, it's kind of a scary situation. And with me here, most of the days, Sometimes until you know six six thirty at night alone, I wouldn't want that unsecured. Okay. Very good. Chief, uh, we're in about seventy two hundred square feet, I think, right now. Uh, back in twenty thirteen, we actually had a uh, 
department-wide needs assessment done. And, uh, it was estimated we need somewhere in the area of 21, 23,000 square feet. Uh, so that's our needs. But uh, a little more specifically about my concerns, uh, are the Our property and evidence room is kind of busting at the seams. Uh, with, with new laws and mandates placed upon us, we're required to keep more and more uh, actual physical evidence, uh, not to mention uh, just found property type things that we come across. But uh, that's becoming concerning. Uh, we normally do a, uh, we call it a bi yearly clean out. Twice a year, we purge the property and evidence room. We purge it. We purge it in January. Uh, we're filled back up uh, by June, and we can't uh, we can't really remove much from what we put in uh, in those previous six months. And we're finding that you know, because cases either don't come to court in a timely manner, or, or we don't have a, a suspect or, or an arrestee to bring to court, their evidence sits and sits and sits. You just can't get rid of it until the case, you know, until the final disposition. So, uh, property and evidence is becoming concerning in our, our ability to uh, work within that room. Uh, and then just overall, uh, I think we are probably maxed out in our male locker room as far as uh, locker space. And uh, female locker room is okay for now. And uh, other, we bring suspects out in the hallway here to do interview rooms which were mandated by law to do when certain when certain crimes are committed so uh, we're, we're bringing some of the worst of the worst at times right through the hallways of this building uh, to, to be interviewed uh, right in that interview room which is the old HR so I would, I would love to be able to have a situation where uh, we don't have to do that so there's not a connect in drilling to that room where HR is, no. or was? Could that be? Uh, it's possible. Uh, I'm not sure if we could breach a wall there or not, but you now you're kind of limiting other office space uh, sure. in the rooms next to it so that you can have a doorway. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, what you want to be able to do is uh, bring somebody securely uh, without even marching them through the uh, internal hallways of the police station. Uh, but, you know, this, this is what we're working with. Uh, plus, plus, I'll just add to that, there's times I've heard people standing outside trying to listen to what's going on in that room. So, it's also a... Yeah, just, yeah, not I, just a safety factor. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good point. Um, yeah, we always say there, there are no rooms in the police station that are uh, designed or really adequate for uh, private conversation unless you're uh, whispering <coughs> if, if you had the where Renee is currently the HR section the mayor's office would that section be enough for the police department for the next four or five years uh, uh, yeah any, any space that we could gain we would make use of and uh, we make it work for whatever whatever the time is, whether it's two years or five years, and we, we would make it work and we would gladly take the space. Um, uh, well, we would love to be able to have the back hallway and, and the upstairs. Um, well, how do you mean this? How would the building play here? I don't think it would be enough. The one problem with that though is the kitchens, the staff kitchens throw back there. The staff kitchens in the room. Yeah, so we'd have to move that. The uh, <coughs> finance department, how's the finance department doing? Uh, I think we have plenty of room uh, for our operating needs. Uh, we have storage needs, but that's been uh, taken care of by our uh, seat there. Um, and once, unlike uh, Chip and Gene, I think once it's out of our office and enough time has passed, we very frequently we need to go back and dig stuff out like you guys So if that can the fact is uh, stored off site that that's not a problem for us. So we have room for our current staffing level and we just have a storage thing which we now have a problem with our seat tanner. What I would like to see though is um, 
because of a recent incident, and unfortunately, what you hear about nationwide, it's maybe a more secure area for that fire side, people coming in and not being able to go directly into the offices, maybe a higher counter for the you know, two clerks who take payment, because, again, we unfortunately see these horrible headlines, and we've had a little bit of a case of, you know, people come irate, come in, not only paying the bill that they question, but also any kind of permit or any kind of uh, violation that they've been sent. I think you're right on target. You know, when 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 this was uh, designed and built in 1997, and uh, I knew Gene and I and Charlie, us three were involved in in uh, the design of this building, and uh, we never thought, we never knew. This is before Y2K. And, and it is Charlie's fault, I want to say. <laughs> and, and, uh, but we, we were involved in this, and when we went into that meeting room, we thought it was nice to have that receptionary right there and the way that we did it. And looking back, quite frankly, it was probably a, 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 wasn't a very smart move when you have, I mean, I've been in that hallway entering this building and we're interrogating witnesses uh, or, or they're coming here to see an officer and it's not good for the regular customers of the town to come through not let alone our parks and rec kids they come right through that atrium all the time yes. so we've been very very fortunate that there hasn't been any uh, major uh, issues we see them i think we all see see these issues how do we go about, I think this is a great first step, because uh, we got to work on security for our staff. Uh, we want to uh, uh, make sure that uh, all of our employees are safe when they're here at work. And I think that those are things we can do. Lou, do you see any, um, do we, the administration side, is there any need to? See, I'm used to working in a room full of stacks of paper filing cabinets. So uh, if you ever, the next administrator comes along, you might, or she, might want an office like a regular administrator. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 office. I hear you. And Michelle uh, probably has her opinion about what we need to do, too. Uh, Michelle? Michelle, you're <laughs> one. What do you say? All I can say is that Lewis's office filled up half of the seat tainer. Just as all. <laughs> but um, yeah, we certainly need more space as well. I think once we got that seat tanker, that helped a great deal. But physically, and the increased security for finance, that we would need that for the reception side too, because that person's right after the front line as well. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, uh, Chip, I know you've looked at it, probably Dan has looked at it, the building, uh, the Parks and Rec building. Uh, initially, uh, I, I know that when we were involved, we bought that for extended parking. We actually, if I remember correctly, we bought that building, we were going to demolish it, and that was going to be parking for this site. Can that building be, uh, let's, for, let's, let's think about retrofitted or demolished and rebuilt, maybe three or four stories. Uh, is there something that we could do with that to take care of all of our administration needs? It could help, but it is in a historic district, so that would have to be. <laughs> 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 so it's not big enough for you to move over there and use the upstairs as storage? No, but we have the upstairs, half the upstairs we have built down. I think Finance has some stuff over there. We have some stuff. Yeah. And that yeah. 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 yeah.
you know, it's giant news. You know, we got the Red Cross building, which uh, we got the, set, uh, the wastewater treatment plant. We got the old uh, the public department works. I think you're good for many, 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 many years. But for ourselves here, uh, structurally, can we go up? Can we go up anymore? On this building? Yeah. It may take some modification to the lower level. If it wasn't because when you design a building and you start with everything you're going to have up top and work down, you build your foundations a whole way that. So that's kind of hard to say. Yes. You know, you, of course. I think anything's possible when we think about these things. And you know, like this room here, for example. Listen, this is a fantastic meeting room. But maybe this meeting room could go and take up a quarter of the space upstairs, and this could be used as space for uh, downstairs for for the for the staff in some way. Uh, you know, we use this. We use this meeting room three times a month, and from a valuable space standpoint. And the other boards too. And the other boards, that's correct. Yeah, so it's being used a lot. It is being used a lot. But it could be a space that could be used eight hours a day, and our space upstairs in some way of recreate it. I don't know. I maybe know. maybe our meeting room yeah. goes next door. That's what I was just thinking. Maybe our new meeting room for the town uh, is next door. I don't know, but. Let's think outside the box here a little bit. Might be something to think about. Let's have figure it out. Now, we also, and listen, I'm throwing these ideas out there so everyone can kind of, uh, we're not, I'm, in my opinion, I'm not in love to have to be here. So if this makes more sense for something else and then we create something next door, or, uh, you know, we've got where the Alliance office is now, we've got, your old meeting rooms that I think at some point we need to to get those uh, 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 redone in some way. We, can, we have a lot of uh, storage. We have a lot of storage <laughs> items, but I think we can take a lot of that storage and put back to you when you get that 30,000 square foot building done, right? Mm -hmm. Well, good. Uh, now, this meeting was about a little bit about space, but I also saw it talked about uh, Department request. Was anyone prepared to tell me department request? It's on capital, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I have yeah. to think department requests that will financially impact the town. So yes. I don't know if they're necessarily capital requests. But one thing that we need to absolutely have happen this year is that we get additional man hour support for HR. And that has to be has to happen is evidenced by the fact that Renee, I think we looked at, she averages about four hours overtime, a pay period throughout yeah, the year. Eight to ten. Eight, and that's just to keep on top of things. So mm -hmm. this is a very active employer um, because of the kind of work that's done. There's you know service, um, there's hazards, there's a lot of workers' comp claims, um, a lot of uh, foot traffic into the office about benefit programs, leave of absence, Every table change comes through us. Any type of employee action we're involved in. And we just need more uh, support. So it's either, we're thinking a 20 hour part time person a week would probably help tremendously. Um, an alternative to that would be to, instead of me, have a full time generalist. And that would be more hours as an employee. Um, or you could increase my hours, but that's that doesn't make sense you know, financially. So there's different ways to look at it. We think the most cost-effective way is to have a part-time support person, because there's a lot of things Renee's doing that you know, she could pass that on to somebody else. And a lot of regular monitoring and tracking that uh, you know, it has gotten ahead of us that we really need to get back on top of. So that's probably the most critical thing, I think, for our department needs. Um, and then, um, let me see where else. As far as organizationally, things that could impact the budget is, I think this year we need to go with looking at implementing a COLA slash merit um, program versus a straight COLA program. And that's what most, uh, there was an MML survey done last year, and pretty much that's what everyone has gone to, either a combination or straight merit increases. The problem is with just COLAs, 
we're not getting the performance evaluations done because you know the opinion is what's it going to impact? You know we're not going to get an increase for it, and we're going to get our cola anyway. <coughs> so this would make sure that we get performance evaluations done on everybody in a timely manner, and then it would incentivize people to, you know, really perform. Um, so I think that's something that we should be rolled out. Um, also, we need to look at the wage scales. You know, with the market now, we're seeing higher wage rates for, you know, base level positions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we need to increase some of our bottom scales, and we probably need to increase overall the breadth of the scale, give you know a little bit uh, broader range to that. Um, so that would impact some of the people with the minimums, um, so that could have a financial impact. Um, implementing structural security measures, which we kind of touched on, but mm -hmm. immediately that would include we'd like a bus. If you know we're staying where we are, a buzzer down our hallway with controlled access, the employees could have a, a fob or something to enter um, security buzzers to the police department from the finance desk and from the reception desk so that immediately, you know, there'd be um, someone that can come to help. Um, and then in Mary's area to get controlled access to that area as well. And then the last thing was there was a request to look at the retirement plan to see whether or not the um, uh, the non-contractual employees could get back into the retirement plan. I think Steve has initiated a request mm -hmm. to see if that's a possibility. Um, but depending on the outcome of that, that could have some financial implications. Yeah, well, yeah. And on the flip side, how do you communicate with all the employees in the town of Elton? I mean, your HR, there are new things coming out, there's programs, there's whatever, whatever. So do you all get the balance or something included in their paycheck or what have you? Um, we communicate in a bunch of different ways uh, with department directors and anyone that has an email. We have mass email communications, but there's some staff that don't have that, and that's where we have to rely on uh, the department directors. Or there's times where you know we'll go down to the locations to make presentations um, or address specific items that are important for everyone to hear firsthand. Um, so that's that's the main way we do that. All right, thanks. Very good. Well, listen, that's uh, great information. Thank you. The uh, why I got all the department heads here, I think it's very important to let everyone know that uh, uh, looking forward to the budgeting process, uh, this is going to be a year that uh, there won't be a lot of capital purchases as far as equipment goes. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, I want everyone to even think about doing some uh, if you could possibly cut back and if you could take a look at additional call savings. I think that everyone in this group, I think, has call savings. Uh, they do it every every day, every month. I, I don't just be conscious of that. We've got, uh, uh, from a budgeting standpoint, last year we lost close to $300,000 worth of uh, income, state shared income coming into the town. We were able to eat that this year. But next year, uh, just kind of everyone put in their minds that we're going to divide that little hump by every department, and it's going to be a little chop. So uh, that's the only way we can do it. We haven't received any. Uh, I just received my assessment at home, and it stayed the same. I don't know what the norm is uh, for assessment. Anyone's taxes assessment go up? You should have received your assessment. Yours went up? Every three years. Yeah, yeah, mine, mine actually stayed the same So, uh, uh, from assessment standpoint. So those are the numbers that we got to start to see to see what the revenue uh, for the town is. But we want to make sure that we take a look at uh, all ends. And I, I know this group does a fantastic job with it, so I know I'm uh, kind of preaching to the choir. Chief, it looks like you got your book out. What do you want to tell me? <laughs> tell me what capital you were really looking for. Well. Instead of going into any kind of great detail, I was looking at somewhere in here, maybe three hundred thousand dollars of capital. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, I'm also kind of looking at some of the things that are on my capital list right now that I might be able to uh, squeeze out of uh, existing budget funds and uh, seize funds. For instance, uh, we're going to be upgrading our tasers uh, department wide, and I was able to take that out of. 
these funds. Uh, okay. There may be some other things that I need to upgrade those. Uh, may be in capital or I'm going to put in capital that I'll be paying for other ways. So that 300 number is uh, actually a little bit high. And uh, I, had to, I had staff put in some things that uh, now that I'm here when I'm here, and I'll figure out other ways to pay them. But, but no, we, we be on, we'll be on board with, uh, with whatever is needed. Well, from your department, I was thinking more about the cars. Mm -hmm. Dan's department, uh, I think that we bought a lot of different things over the years. We may yeah, still have the plasma. Yeah, yeah. I think we still have the plasma table out there or whatever it may be. So I know there's some things there. And listen, we're going to look at all those. Sure. I want you to bring them to the table and let's take a look at them because we don't know what the the other side of it's going to be. But I think we're well equipped. Yeah, we're minimizing, like my department, minimizing if a couple replacement vehicles <coughs> maybe small mini exits about it. I mean, it's not nearly the other year. So we're pretty much equipped. So we maintain it pretty well, too. So that's why I should, that's that's where we're going to the same kind of cycle where it's going to be a lot lower than other years. Do we have any more on that subject? I'd like to comment that uh, in Dan's team, they, uh, they're just two uh, technicians, or uh, Greg and Roy, and they spend a a tremendous amount of time uh, fixing the police cars, uh, the two uh, canine cars. I had not realized the extent of what is involved in there, and those guys spent, what, uh, I don't know how many countless man hours tearing those things, the new cars, how far it could make them. Them for the, uh, wow. For the, for It'd be easier if, gold, they, if so. they gave us new cars so I think in the back with all the seats, but they give them to you. So the first thing they have to do is literally tear the whole thing apart. It'd be a lot easier if they just came in pieces, but and then from there, they're very good at what they do, so they're dedicated. So. Yeah, I, I've been down there to just like a whole oh, there. Or to see if they see we'll get you on the It's incredible how how it's skilled they are they've become quick. doing yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, yes. we're way ahead of the game That's in terms of retrofitting or fitting out our cars. I like that something that we're, uh, unfortunately, the finance department, we're rapidly, very rapidly approaching into the useful life of our county software. Yeah. It's an IBM-based system that has one person who is responsible for the program and is a whole, it works very well, but it's an old system and the support has ended for that or will shortly be ending. So a uh, whole new accounting software is, that will be a, a material. Well, we need that to do business, so. Well, actually, uh, that is kind of important. It is. We have to have that. Mr. Lemon, you had a comment about that. I thought we were committed to uh, replacing four police cars every year. Actually, last year, I think we replaced how many did we do in fiscal? Six. We did six, yeah, and I think, I think we did seven last year. And we did a few additional ones so that we can have this additional year off. But our oldest police car is now uh, 12 or 14? 2012 or 12? I think 12. 2012, so we're actually on a pretty good cycle of only having our oldest vehicle six years old. That's pretty wonderful, actually. When we first started, we had 20-year-old vehicles. Is the police department satisfied with that? program that we're not yeah, yeah we're, we're satisfied and uh, and I knew uh, early on uh, when we first brought this to the table this uh, replacement car program that at some point there would be a year where we I mean, went how does all that tie into what Lewis just said about spending all this time repairing vehicles they're not repairing the retrofitting. What happens is when they get the new vehicle. Oh, retrofitting. Yeah, the retrofitting. So when for the dogs, we got two for the canine. For the, the regular dogs. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got you've got the retrofitting for the dogs and also for the regular police cars. When they come in, they come in basically like a base model. Then they have to strip everything. They put the new lights, the light bars, you know, the, the seats and everything else. It's you know quite. Yeah, I got it. The other thing is you mentioned cost down, cost reduction. It seemed to me that you would ask each department ahead to submit a plan on how they can reduce costs for the coming year, see how that works. I'm sure this team is doing that, but it's a great point. Kathy, the next item is up uh, for discussion is the employee leave bank policy. Is that something you want to talk about? Yes, yes. So um, that is something that has recently uh, come to our attention that we do have a need to have that kind of a donated sick leave bank. It's something that a lot of organizations have. Cecil County governments want to explain do. to me who knows something about okay. this. Okay. 
So a donated sick leave bank is a leave bank where employees who have uh, more than a certain amount of sick leave on the books are able to donate leave into this bank and that if there's an employee who has a need where they've exhausted their all of their leave, but, um, vacation, sick and personal, and they still have some serious medical emergency for themselves or family that's going to warrant an extended leave mm -hmm. uh, and unpaid time, they would be able to draw apply to this leave bank and request to have a certain amount of um, additional leave time granted to them. And this kind of program um, has parameters in place so that you know we're making sure that it's being awarded appropriately to employees that should be eligible for it. Um, has to, the IRS regulates this kind of thing. Otherwise, if, you know, there's cases where sometimes employers have one employee donate leave to another employee. It's not through a leave bank. That has tax implications, then, and that that donated leave then gets taxed to the person that gave it away. Okay. And so if you have a leave bank like this, it protects the tax consequences. And so the person actually receiving the leave is the one that ends up getting taxed on that additional um, leave time and the payments that are made. Will there be a policy presented to us to the, so we can see exactly what it states? Yes, there is a policy that we have and that um, we'll be providing to you today um, and for review and input. And then um, hopefully at your next meeting, we can get a decision on it. Perfect. So uh, we'll Lewis get that and uh, Lou, you'll be we have it all, but I do want to have time to read it all, so I'm just going to hand it out to you. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's you. a good program. The Sioux County Board of Education <coughs> uses it. I was part of it, but it, it, it works. It's very effective. It is. It is. And one thing with it, too, is there really will not be probably that many um, leave requests that would qualify because the town does have a, um, a rich benefit program, so most people have short term disability insurance. So if it's a personal leave um, where they're on short-term disability, they're already getting some other income, so they wouldn't qualify. People on workers' comp leave, they're getting income, they wouldn't qualify. So it's really only where there's no other sources of income that the employee has uh, for themselves or a family member. And could you touch, before you finish, uh, exactly what Steve has approached you about? I know it's about the retirement program because I guess many of us have been approached as well, but I guess it's trying to get off the ground. But okay. basically, what is it that they're seeking? Um, well, we've had the request a couple of times that um, employees um, that they know that the police department, that you know, the, con the those covered by the contract have got have a <laughs> separate retirement plan, and they'd like to be able to see if they are able to get back into the state retirement system. Yeah, the fine benefit plan. Um, and that's just the only request is they'd like to have a formal um, investigation and response to say yes we can or no we can't. And if we can, then that needs evaluation to see if it's the right thing to do. But that's the extent of our um, request. It's just to have it formally investigated and uh, uh, response. We, we will. I know, that, I know the staff has already sent a request. I have submitted a formal application to the Maryland State Retirement. I've uh, been in contact uh, via email with the person, and um, they said they would have a decision this week. And, and we have been verbally told what they thought their feelings were, but there's never been a formal application submitted. And um, they, they have one now. So Very good. As soon as I get the final answer from them, I'll let you know. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lou, uh, we want to talk about the uh, exterior color, but. You can tell us what you're doing, but I'd like to recommend that Mary Jo and uh, Jean to make the decisions instead of uh, and, yeah. and I think Mary Mary Malone needs to be involved in this. Maybe Mary did do the green. Not, did, I did you pick the green? And the... No. 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 That, that was me. Hey. I, was... I went over to tell them no, but it was too late. I already sent it out. <laughs> So what are you thinking? What colors are we looking at? You've got the... Uh, Jean's, I think Jean, I gave you the palette. This is pink. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this is it. pink, right? I'm sorry? Pink uh, colors? No. Yeah. Not roof colors. What she said. No, they're all colors. You She's asking one color if it's for, a roof color. For, one <laughs> color for the roof of the pie pan. The what walls, is that? And this is the roof. See? That's how it works. So you're going to pick a color for the roof and a color for the side. In this particular case, the... Um, the wall, the wall colors will be the same as the yeah, downstairs. 
When do you need an answer? I'm sorry. When do you need an answer? Really? You hate to be sick. I mean, excuse me, with the contractor, I'll tell them. I'll tell them in the morning, next Wednesday morning, what the colors are. Mary, what did you like for the cover? I was telling Mayor yesterday when I was uh, with Boys and Girls Club, they had specific colors when they built these things, but I can't get in the website anymore. Um, calming or and well, welcoming. To I, th I think uh, we're always just, I, I think we all kind of feel this way. Uh, the inviting colors are probably more of the light, light blue, mm -hmm. sky blue, uh, may, maybe even a little bit of a gray. Uh, this is well, right here. We that, go. That oh, is, up, you? A metal roof is this blue that's really nice. Thank <laughs> Thank Chief. Thank you. Chief. I know some personally that they have some uh, ideas about, like, I would call it color palettes and stuff. You know, mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, oh, our <laughs> artist did an artist. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to put anybody down here. here but when yeah, when I'm yeah. told that it, it would blend in with the Board of Education building, and the Board of Education building is a red brick, I didn't really see the, the green um, as, a, as an option. Well, listen, so, I mean, if we can make the <laughs> area, I like this Not even better. Yeah. Yeah, it's that fresh, it's clean, better. it's yeah. neat. That, that green. But, um, Mary, why don't you pick that green? Like a brick color trench. I like it more. What do you say about it? What do you say about it? I think I think we all looked at this and we kind of liked it. Is it beige or is it like a blackish? What is that color? The color the Well, I think the only the only time you're going to see the only time you're going to see the roof is that gymnasium side of the roof. Which is fine. It could come from that's exactly what I just pulled. That's right. Energized, enthused, and power. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so you want to uh, consider a color that, as far as I'm just thinking, in terms of maintenance, it looks great now, but hasn't looked in five years ago. I just said the same thing about the clown except the outside. Yeah. Oh, you mean that's what you're. <laughs> Here it is, right? The light blue. I'm thinking blue. Oh, that's well. Well, here's here's what I say. Oh, I mean, yeah. Instead of all, all of us to have a different opinion, but I would like I like for Jean and Mary Jo, if you would, work with Lewis and pick out the colors. I think make it inviting. I like the uh, I like the blues. We like the grays. We like the beiges. We'll stay away from. The army. We we'll stay away from the army color. That's what we'll do. A lot of kind of colors have significance of why they're red or why they're blue. They, there's, just, there's just so many things. Even I guess you know that you're a painter. Maybe you need to clue them in there with them. There you go. Okay. Well, also, doesn't a metal? I don't know about a metal group, but a lot of roof colors put more heat in, like when the sun's hitting, so it costs more on your electric bill for making it. Cool. Are panels, solar panels on that roof? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> no, look, I know. <laughs> but, uh, so, I, I don't know. The uh, <laughs> we're in what's called the mid Atlantic <laughs> area, so I had discussed with the architects at the last meeting whether a dark color which absorb heat or a light color would reflect heat. In the area we are, it's kind of one way or the other won't make any difference. Okay. North or south, it would, but in our area, they we can touch on that at the meeting. So well, listen, nice. we're uh, just rambling. You guys are got it, and uh, this okay. meeting is adjourned. All right. <laughs> Thank you.